Uh, well, I think uh, the jazz audiences in general are a very select bunch, I should say. Um, I think in the States, and this is just my personal opinion, I feel sometimes that, you know, because in certain regions they can see jazz all the time in New York, so sometimes, you know, maybe they're a little more reserved than, you know, than normal. Whereas, like, if you go to Europe, uh, you know, like Italy or Germany, you know, because they don't get the music all the time is either festivals or some kind of special event, then, you know, musicians from across, the, you know, across the pond will come. So I think they have a tendency to appreciate it more. Uh, I know I'm always shocked, like, when I play in New York or, you know, or various other places in the States and we get, like, a standing ovation and they want us to play more. I'm like, man, that's, you don't always get that in the States. You know, that, that's normally for you know, in Europe, you know, where they won't let you go unless you play an encore. So when you get it in the States, it's like, oh, okay, this is cool. You know, this is a hip audience, you know. Um, but, and that kind of goes back to what I was mentioning earlier about, like, being able to read the room and being able to, you know, engage people. I think if you engage them and not try to play down to them, but give them something that they can, you know, uh, hang on to. You know, melody is it's so key, important, you know. You know, that's one of the things that... Um, Going back to Tom Harrell, that's one thing that he grabs you with. You know, he writes these melodies that stick in your mind. I call them memorable melodies because they just stick with you. You can walk away whistling them and they just stay in your head. So I think if you engage, you know, the audience, you know, especially in the States, if you engage them with a melody that sticks with them, they're, you know, you've got them. You, they hang on to that and they're going to want to follow you no matter what. And, and, um, and uh, you know, in New York and, and uh, also in Europe, I think... Um, the same thing, but I think, you know, again, I think in, in Europe, in European countries, they tend to be a little more, like, aggressive, like, you know, they, you know, they want, they want it because they don't get it all the time. In Asia, in Japan, um, especially, you know, sometimes it's hard, you know, they're really, very reserved. You know, what I, what I tell people is a lot of times, like, you play the first set and they're just like, you know, it's very, very polite, very, like, reserved. And by the second set, they're, like, been drinking a little bit, and they're just like, yeah, you know, they go crazy, you know. <laughs> so it's, it's pretty funny, you know. Um, and, you know, other regions, and, in, in, um, you know, I've been to Korea, and the audiences have been great. Um, one of my favorite places, and I've only been there once, was um, was China. I went to Beijing, like, in in the mid, uh, maybe it was late 90s, maybe like 98 or something like that. And I just remember the audience going crazy. I mean, they were like stomping and clapping and then they wouldn't let us leave. I mean, we played like three encores or something, three or four encores and they were just, they just kept wanting more and more. I was like, man, this is, this is crazy. They're like a rock crowd or something like that. It was, it was amazing. So, you know, there's definitely different regions in Asia that where, you know, the, the audience, you know, the audience participation or audience differs but I I think you know they equally love it you know it's just the way they show their love about the music but yeah. I, I, I never think jazz is dead you know you know because there's always gonna be younger musicians that are are interested in it you know um, just last week I was in uh, Tel Aviv in Israel playing a concert with Tom Carroll and the first three rows, the first four rows, we were playing in an opera house. The first three or four rows, nothing but students, and they loved it. You know, you know, I, you know. They were, I got all these messages on Facebook of how much they enjoyed the concert. And so, I don't, I don't think it's dead. I think it's just, you know, like I said earlier, everything comes full circle. So I think it's, you know, it's a period where there's just, you know, there's some shifts and changes in, in, you know. I think in the uh, publicity and then how it's how it's publicized and you know it's it's definitely not in the forefront like rock or or hip hop but you know I think you know I think there's you know there's some strides that are being made and you know the thing with jazz it's like you know when things shift we try to shift with it and we go and you know and you know it comes around and so you know with the with you know with the the interest in younger musicians continuing you want to learn. I think it could only, you know, come back to the forefront at some point, you know, you know, be it 20, 30 years, however long it takes, it'll, it'll still come back, you know, you know, and there's, you know, there's still artists, you know, like this guy on my shirt, Jay Dilla, you know, he, he got a lot of, um, he got a lot of inspiration from, 
and listening to jazz records and you know sampling some of the stuff that you know was was out there from you know from be it from the 70s or even earlier from you know and so uh i think there's always an interest in the music so i, I don't ever say it's dying it's you know somebody always i forget who used to tell me like eh, jazz is not dead it just smells funny yeah. but you know it's i feel it's alive and well so i don't worry about it you know i think it's it's going to be around and you know, it's you know. I think it's our job now, as you know, like myself and some of the some of the guys in my guys and girls in my age group. It's our it's our job to continue to pass down the tradition because somebody had to do it for us. So, you know, if we don't continue, then we're doing these you know, guys and girls that uh, came before us a disservice. So um, that's why I, you know, playing in bands with Kenny Barron and Tom Harrell. Who've, who've been out there since, you know, early 60s, I feel it's so important for for me to to uh, learn as much as I can from them so that I can continue to pass it down. My name is Jonathan Blake.